Hello, everybody. My name is KevGuy378, and welcome to a new series that I am going to start called Depression Quest. Um, Depression Quest is about an interactive nonfiction experience, pretty much about living with depression, as you can see on the left side. And Depression is a very big, uh, big problem. It's an issue that really plagues a lot of people, especially um, with uh, mental instability. Also, it, it really messes with you a lot. Um, I've had depression before. Like um, it was pretty severe, as. <laughs> If you watched the uh, Katawa Shoujo Part One, I did a little bit of a story, a uh, personal story of myself, of why our um, why I was in the hospital because of that. <clears throat> and I would like to uh, reiterate that it's, it's a combination of a lot of things with depression. It it becomes the only thing that you really think about. When everything is going so wrong in your life, or when there's so much stress from everybody, from everything, the past, the present, even thinking about the future, everything is downhill to you. And it's a very big issue for a lot of people that it's really hard to just get out of that loop. I didn't have that that psychological room to uh, expand on. I couldn't really see every anything beyond being sad, upset angry with myself, unhappy. It was a big mess, pretty much. And it's it's a difficult thing to deal with for a lot of people. I am i don't have it anymore. Well, I'd have a little bit, maybe like 5%. But when I had it, it was horrible. You don't want to do anything. You spend so much energy just, just thinking about it, just dealing with it. You don't want to get out of bed. You don't want to do anything. And then sometimes worse things come in, comes into your mind, like suicide. And that is, that is something so very upsetting to really think about when it consumes you, when, when it consumes people, that that's the only way to escape things. And it's, it's very sad because you just don't seem to be able to figure out how to fix things. And, and it's, it's very hard. People with depression and and suicidal thoughts, just, I, I understand, well, because I've gone through it before. And uh, I just want to play this game to just kind of, in a sense, show you guys, I guess, how, how it affects people, because it affects people differently. If you've never had it, you, you wouldn't really understand, but I guess this is one of the ways to kind of express it and, and show it to you guys. And I'm, I think I'm gonna do that is just play through this and just hope it really touches you guys. So yeah, let's start this, let's start this depression quest playthrough.
depression quest. An interactive nonfiction about living with depression. Its emotional character is probably mostly indescribable, except as a sort of double bind in which any slash all of the alternatives we associate with human agency, sitting or standing, doing or resting, speaking or keeping silent, living or dying, are not just unpleasant but literally horrible. David Foster Wallace. Depression Quest is a game that deals with living with a depression in a very literal way. This game is not meant to be fun or lighthearted experience. If you are currently suffering from the illness and are easily triggered, please be aware that this game uses stark depictions of people in very dark places. If you are suicidal, please stop playing this game and visit the suicide prevention hotline to talk to someone. Yes, please, if you are having thoughts, Please call the suicide prevention hotline. It, it feels really good to just talk to people. And I hope you guys would do that if you do have these thoughts. The, game, the goal of this game is twofold. Firstly, we want to illustrate as clearly as possible what depression is like so that it may be better understood by people without depression. Hopefully this can be something to spread awareness and fight against the social stigma and misunderstandings that depression sufferers face. Secondly, our hope is that in presenting as real a simulation of depression as possible, other sufferers will come to know that they aren't alone and hopefully derive some measure of comfort from that. It goes without saying that because of the very nature of depression, it is experienced differently by every person who suffers from it. We aren't trying to say that this is the best or most accurate representation, merely that this is an amalgamation, amalgamation of the experiences of the developers and several people close to them. Many of the following encounters deal with issues such as therapy, medication, handling a love life, and reaching out to support networks. In reality, less than half of depression sufferers actually seek treatment for reasons such as lack of money, perceived personal failing, or public stigma. These things were included in order to touch upon as broad a range as possible since all of these elements can be very important to sufferers of depression, though they will likely not be the experiences of most sufferers. It is important to recognize that not everyone with depression is so lucky. Many people with the illness don't have a lot of the luxuries that we have in this game. We've written it this way so that we can focus specifically on the illness, which becomes more and more difficult to deal with as the person who has it is less and less well off. This game uses audio as part of the play experience. We encourage you to play with your sound on. Thank you for playing. Um, <laughs> I don't know if this came back on. Uh, just, uh, just want to say that during this playthrough, I might I'm I'm probably going to bring up stories of myself just to kind of sh um, express and show how how these kind of things really affected me as a, as a person who who had it. So yeah, just wanted to let you guys know. All right, well, let's view the controls. Oh, okay. Confirm action. All right, let's begin this game. It is early on a Monday morning. You're a mid 20s human being. Hey, it sounds like me. You have a significant other named Alex. You met Alex through a mutual friend a few months back. The two of you hit it off pretty well that first night, and after a series of initially awkward dates, you finally become a couple. Much to your surprise and excitement, Alex is three months younger than you are, and is currently a student with a part-time job in broad social circle. She's also got a wide variety of interests and oftentimes you worry that you might be too boring for her. But she has been good at trying to reassure you that she's happy with you. 
Your relationship consists of a lot of nights in watching Netflix when you both got time off work and she doesn't have classes, with the occasional social outing that she tends to have to talk to you into attending. She tries to be understanding when you are in one of your moods, as she puts it. Though you are starting to feel like she doesn't understand what it's like for you, and this is a source of tension in your relationship, coupled with your reluctance to want to go to college parties, this feeds your worry of not being exciting enough for them. The front of they've been seeing you for the past few months. The rest of your social circle. Who is my social circle? Your social circle is made up of a few close friends, some of which you've known from high school and some from jobs that you've worked. You've also made various acquaintances through reluctantly going to social events with Alex, and you keep in touch with a few friend of friends that you occasionally run into. You also have several outlying friends that you talk to regularly that you feel less guarded with, possibly due to communicating from the safety of being behind the keyboard. You enjoy the low commitment of the friendships, since they don't expect very much of you other than to listen and share personal thoughts and experiences. Despite the low commitment, you feel fairly connected with these people and tend to be more honest with them than people you interact with in real life, on a day-to-day -day basis. You feel incredibly nervous, trying to make few new friends on your own, and are very good at talking yourself out of going to unfamiliar places or larger social engagement, engagements, regardless of how much you may actually want to attend. Meeting new people stresses you out to a high degree, and this is something you wish to work pa to, you could work past. I actually have that um, sort of anxiety. I, I have a sort of social anxiety that that's really hard sometimes. To, um, I, I get to I get into the what ifs in my head when I when I interact with people, uh, meeting them, and it just kind of it overwhelms sometimes. But uh, I'm actually kind of working on that, and it's actually getting better. You admit you have a bad habit of flaking on social engagements, even with longtime friends, and are puzzled as to why some days you just can't force yourself to go see these people that you really do care about. Those that have stuck around long enough to be that close with you understand that this is a thing you sometimes do, and have seemed to more or less accept it even though they chide you for it on occasion. However, you've had friends in the past give up trying to maintain a friendship with you because of this trait, taking your social anxieties as a personal slight, or eventually getting tired of trying to track you down all the time. You feel incredibly guilty about this, but are not quite sure how to change. When you're doing this all by yourself, when, when you are really working through depression by yourself, it is very hard. Because you only have your thoughts to really think of. You don't, you can't really see what other, how other people really think or, or notice these things it's so you become you become consumed with with your thoughts and not what other um, with, with your friends uh, could tell you you know to have support this is a variety of friends and acquaintances some of whom you met at your day job which is a little boring but pays the rent You'd like to be doing more with your life, as would your parents, but you're still in the progress of figuring out what that means and how to go about it. What is my day job? You have a day job which you feel is really nothing special. You started out receiving minimum wage, but have stayed around long enough to be making enough to support yourself. The work is dull and unrewarding, and most days you feel like just about anyone could do it. You have a hard time relating to most of your co-workers, so you mostly keep to yourself and get the work done while you're there. There are one or two people you chat with, though you wouldn't consider yourself close with them. That's, a, that's actually how I felt when I was working. Um, I worked at Abercrombie, and just folding clothes and stuff. Um, this was before uh, November's incident. And um, it was just, I didn't want to talk to anybody. I didn't want to interact with anyone. I just wanted to, to just fold the clothes in the back and just be on my way with work and hoping that you know things would just pass by really fast 
A lot of days late that you have a really hard time getting out of bed and forcing yourself to go in. You're starting to wonder how long you can keep this up. Uh, this this um paragraph here uh, is about lethargic and being lethargic and uh, having no energy at all when you wake up. It, it sucks. It, it, it's a horrible feeling. You really like to find another job in your field of interest. You feel like you're underqualified every time you look at online job postings. Sometimes you think about going back to school, but you would be unsure how you would be able to support yourself and wonder if the degree would really help anyway. This is actually something I'm actually uh, debating ab uh, about too, with going back to school. Because um, I really like doing YouTube, I have a passion to doing YouTube and just doing these uh, visual novels, these uh, readings. I love it. it. It feels great to just get involved in these stories. But sometimes I, I kind of wonder, since I went to school, it just... Should I go back? Hmm. Oh yeah, and who are my parents? You're one of the few people you know of whose parents never got divorced, but you do wonder if they still love each other sometimes. You have an older brother named Malcolm, who has moved across the country with his wife to work a high-paying job. Every major holiday that you see him at, um, at, you feel a bit jealous and like the lesser kid despite being genuinely happy to see him. You feel very ashamed of these feelings. Your parents genuinely care about you. This often involves inviting you back to your childhood home for dinner, though your mother thinks you never visit quite, quite enough. But you get the impression that they don't fully understand you. They want to see you succeed, but don't know why you haven't gone further in life yet because you're smart and talented. Anytime you try to talk to them about your motivation issues, they tell you that the solution is simply to work harder or want it more. Your father is generally more forgiving of your lack of a career path, while your mother seems to think you are too smart to be in the position you're in. You know they love you, and that they are not that not bad people, but you really feel like a big disappointment sometimes. I felt that too. That that's what happened with the incident with on, uh, in November with the uh, hospitalization. I, I just feel a big disappointment because I just never really done well at school with the depression and um, mental issues. It, it just it, it was hard for me to really understand myself as to why I, I get these thoughts or why I'm just why I'm not doing well. I spend a lot of nights fixating. Oh, you're also dealing with motivation issues that sometimes makes dealing with these things difficult. You feel like this is probably your fault, and on bad days can feel inwardly angry and down on yourself for being lazy. But you're not quite sure how you can break out of it how other people deal with these feelings and seem so very functional. You spend a lot of nights fixating on thinking about this, but never seem to do anything about it other than lose sleep. It's an unseasonably warm Wednesday evening. You spent the past several hours at work. The past week or so, you found your job motivation flagging more so than usual. You've been in a fog practically all day today, simply going through the motions without realizing even what you've been doing half the time. And yet time seems to be moving at half speed. You're so checked out that when your boss approaches you to tell you that it's dead and you can go home early, it barely registers. As you walk home, the streets hiss from the recent rainfall. You know that your significant other will be in classes until late. Another couple hours at least. You briefly considered using this serendipitous solitude to catch up on that project that you've been working on haphazardly for the past few months. What is this project? A while back, you and some of your older friends were out at a bar catching up. After liquefying considerably more of your paycheck than was perhaps responsible and, uh, and ending up thoroughly in your cups, you open up to the only people you really consider yourself close to and end up launching into a drunken tirade about the meaningless of your utterly menial job and ultimately your own existence. Having never really seen you in such a state before, your friends were briefly taken aback by your sudden uncharacteristic outburst. 
When your friends suggested that you get involved with your hobby on a more regular long-term basis, suggesting that spending your energy on something you actually care about might help you to better cope with the shittiness of your 9 to 5. Although you were embarrassed that you let your guard down and you felt self-conscious at seeming to have single-handedly brought the mood down at the table, you convinced yourself on the cab ride home that maybe it would be worth trying out. You began your project some months ago and have miraculously managed to keep at it. Though, your level of motivation and subsequent effort rises and falls considerably. While you were surprised when you started at how good it felt to actually work on something you were passionate about, lately you found it hard to muster the energy to really care about even this. Ugh, having no energy is, it just feels horrible. You just can't do anything or don't want to do anything. As soon as you think about the work that awaits you at home, you can feel the panic creeping in from the back of your brain, unbidden. All you can think about is how incredibly far behind you are, and the amount of work seems nothing less than insurmountable. By the time you arrive home and change out of your uncomfortable work clothes, the stress is weighing down on you like a heavy wet wool blanket. Your computer seems to be staring you down from your desk. You want to sit down and work, but the mere thought of trying to work sends your stress levels flying more than anything you feel suddenly and absolutely exhausted and feel a strong desire to simply hide in bed. Do you order some food, grab a drink, hunker down for a night of work? Well, that's out of the question. Reluctantly sit down at your desk and try and make yourself do something. Turn on the TV, telling yourself you just need a quick half hour to unwind from work or crawl into bed. You're so stressed and overwhelmed you couldn't possibly accomplish anything anyways. Um, I would reluctantly sit down at my desk and try and make myself do something. Even if, even if, if I couldn't do anything, at least I'd sat down to really try and you know, do it. Your depressed interaction is exhausting and you're becoming more and more withdrawn. You're not currently seeing a therapist, you're not currently taking medication for depression. Oh. Well, this is all the time I have for this video. Um, everyone, thank you for watching. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, uh, please like and subscribe to me. It would help me a lot and I would appreciate it. But especially share this video with people. I'm going to do this whole series, but share this video with people so that they can see what depression is really like. Even if it's not, even, even if you can't really understand it as much, at least try and be in the shoes of this person that that has depression. So everyone, thank you again, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.